Now that we've taken a look at limits, what limits are and how to find them, we're ready to answer a question that's really important to us in calculus is what are continuous functions? And basically, the definition of a continuous function is a function that meets three requirements. The first is the function at our point, f of a, exists. So the function cannot be undefined. Second, the limit as x approaches a of the function exists. So the point exists, the limit exists, and the third most important part is that they are the same. In other words, f of a is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x. And if you recall from our conversation about limits, we really like the situation when we can just plug what x is approaching into the function and get that result. If that works out, that is considered continuous at that point. A loose definition of continuous is that the graph could be drawn without lifting our pencil. But if you have to lift your pencil because there's a gap, there's a hole, or there's an asymptote going off to infinity, that makes a discontinuous point. So let's see if we can identify some examples of discontinuity. And for the sake of our conversation, we're going to be specifically interested on if it's continuous or discontinuous at x equals 4. We could look at any point. But for the sake of our conversation, we're going to look at the point x equals 4. And so for our first example, we're going to look at the function f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 8 over x minus 4. Well, the first requirement for a continuity is that the function exists at the point. And we're interested in x equals 4. So if we plug 4 into the function, we end up with 4 squared minus 2 times 4 minus 8 over 4 minus 4. Well, when we simplify that, we get 0 divided by 0, which is indeterminate. And we say it does not exist. So because our point at 4 does not exist, we fail at number 1, which says that f of a exists. Because number 1 fails, it is not continuous. It is discontinuous. So let's try another one. Let's try f of x equals, let's do a piecewise function, 2x minus 1 if x is less than or equal to 4, and x plus 8 if x is greater than 4. Well, the first test is the point has to exist. So let's try f of 4. When we're equal to 4, we're using the first equation. So we have 2 times 4 minus 1, and 8 minus 1 is 7. So the point exists. So requirement number 1 is satisfied. Requirement number 2 says the limit as x goes to 4 of the function has to exist as well. Well, let's try and figure out what that is. The limit, we know, has to approach the same value on both the left and right side. We already found out in the first equation that we're approaching 7 from the first equation. Let's see what we're approaching when we plug 4 into the second equation. Are we approaching the same value? Well, that would give us 4 plus 8, which is equal to 12. In other words, from the top function, we're going towards 
7. And on the bottom function, we're going towards 12, but they're not going to the same point. So the limit does not exist, which means we've failed at step 2 of being a continuous function. There's actually a gap in this function jumping from 12 to 7. So let's try a third example. Let's do another piecewise function. Let's do f of x equals, let's do 3x plus 4. If x is not equal to 4, and we'll say it's equal to um, 8 if x actually equals 4. Well, first we check the point at f of 4. f of 4, we're actually equal to 4. We're going to use that second equation, equals 8. Then we're interested in the limit as x approaches our value of 4. And for that, we're going to use the not equals equation, because what that says is basically we've got a line with a hole. And we don't really care what's happening at the hole. We just care what's happening around it, which does include both sides this time. So the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x is equal to 3 times 4 plus 4, which is 12 plus 4 is 16. So now we've seen that the point exists. That satisfies the first requirement. We see that the limit exists. That satisfies the second requirement. The third requirement says that the point has to equal the limit. Except the problem is the point we said was 8. And the limit we said was 16. So the point is not the same as the limit. And so we end up with a discontinuity because we failed on the third test. They are not the same. So that's kind of the three ways we can fail at trying to be continuous. Number one, the point might not exist. Number two, the limit might not exist. Or number three, the point and the limit might be different values. But let's see if we can look at actually showing that something actually is continuous. Let's look at some examples of continuity, specifically here, let's go x equals 2. We could pick any point. We're going to pick on 2. And we're going to look at f of x equals x squared minus 7x minus 8 over x plus 1. Well, the first requirement is that the point exists. Let's see what's happening at 2. Is there a value? Does it exist? 2 squared minus 7 times 2 minus 8 over 2 plus 1. 4 minus 14 minus 8 is negative 18 in the numerator over 3. It equals negative 6. We have a value. The point exists. We could take the limit as x gets close to 2 of our function. Well, we know. Whenever possible, we like to just plug that number in as long as it's not undefined, which we can do here. 2 squared minus 7 times 2 minus 8 over 2 plus 1. That's not undefined. That comes out to negative 18 over 3, which is negative 6. And so we know that the limit exists. And because we got the same thing for both answers, we can say that the point f of 2 is equal to the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x. They are the same. And so if the point exists and the limit exists and they're both the same, 
we can say, therefore, we're talking about a continuous function. No gaps in the functions, no jumps, no asymptotes. At 2, this function is continuous. Let's do one last example, which is a piecewise function. Let's say 2x minus 3 if x is less than or equal to 2, and x squared minus 2x plus 1 if x is greater than 2. Well, we have three things to check. Does the point exist? Does the limit exist? And are they the same? So first, we'll look at the point at f of 2. When we're actually equal to 2, we use the first equation, 2 times 2 minus 3. 4 minus 3 is 1. So yes, the point exists. To find the limit as x goes to 2 of the function, we're going to see if it's approaching the same value on both sides. We know on one side it's approaching 1. Is it approaching 1 also on the other side, though? To do that, we'll plug 2 into the other side. That's going to give us 2 squared minus 2 times 2 plus 1, which is 4 minus 4, which is 1. So yes, indeed, this function is approaching 1 on both sides. So we can say that the limit equals 1, and the limit exists. We've satisfied the second requirement. The third requirement is we want the point and the limit to be the same. We want f of 2 to equal the limit as x goes to 2 of f of x. And sure enough, they both equal 1. Therefore, they are the same. And therefore, we've satisfied all three requirements of the continuous definition. And so therefore, we can conclude that this function is continuous. There is no gap in the function that fails on our definitions. So today's lesson is really vocabulary-based, learning what continuous means. Continuous means it satisfies three requirements. We need to check all three. Does the point exist? Does the limit exist? And are they the same? If that's the case, then we say the function is continuous at that point. So go ahead and take a look at the homework to practice some of these. Come to class with questions, and we'll look at some applications of continuity, and also start to get ready for how continuity helps us find more advanced calculus concepts. We'll see you then.